Hello. When minister and church leader talk to each other, there's a lot of question and exchange of information, like what do you do in your church? Uh, what book are you reading? And most often, the conversation leads to the topic of success. Is your church or is my church successful? And maybe because we are influenced by the society that surrounds us, very often, maybe too often, we evaluate success uh, around numbers. Um, you know, are, if you're successful, you will draw large crowds. You will have a huge attendance on Sunday morning. Uh, you will have uh, the biggest budget, you will be in the biggest church building, and so on. But we rarely ask the question, or we rarely wonder, are we really answering God's call? And that's part of the questions and the argument. We can find in the book of Micah, a prophet from the First Testament. And through a series of... Micah was what we call these days a minor prophet. We don't know much about it besides the fact that he comes from the country, arrives in the city, and he hates everything that he see, criticize his society, and ask the question, what does the Lord require of you, of us? And a sense of, in a way of argument, is it, the text says, is it burnt offering with calves, or a thousand of ram, or 10,000 of river of oil, or or even a firstborn, and you sense here some sort of competition, some sort of an attack of the principle of more is better, and I will outdo my neighbor and prove that I'm better by giving a bigger gift to God. But the answer provided by this text uh, might surprise some, we know it because it's famous these days, but for those who heard it the first time, it was surely a surprise. What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That's it. Essentially, God is saying, leave your stuff back home and come to me. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way to describe it. It's a, and it's simple to remember, very simple to remember. However, honestly, it's very difficult to live because to do justice requires a commitment every day and everything we do. We cannot just advocate for justice for our friends. And those we don't know, well, good luck for them, but we're not going to do anything. No. It means a real commitment. It, it implies uh, some sort of awareness. Who is marginalized? Who is suffering around me because of what I do or what I'm not doing? And to love kindness, is it's about the same thing. You cannot just be kind with your friends and not caring about others. You cannot just help others when it's convenient for us in our calendar, like Tuesday bef between 2 and 2.15. I have, it. I have some time for kindness, but not the rest of the day. It requires to be present, to be open, to be aware, once again, and to those we love and those we might not appreciate. And walk humbly with God, well, there's no space for boasting here <laughs> about how big our church is. No, it's to live our faith 
simply and to incarnate our values when nobody notice to do it knowing that we will not have a reward we we will not be acknowledged it will not be acknowledged what we will do to do what we are called to do because this is our way of life this is what seems to be normal what seems to be right so once again what's the success in the congregation well maybe we should learn to walk away from nor uh, numbers or material consideration and start looking uh, at how people are living every day I know it's less spectacular it does not it's difficult to reflect in an annual meeting it's always easier to say we have that many baptism and that many wedding but to say we touch people we don't know how many we don't know how but we did and try to discover through this how it could be fulfilling how it can be satisfying once again Thank you for watching. Thank you for being there week after week. I really appreciate your presence. And until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette, and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.